everyone, it's Georgia here and we've got a little bit of a different one here for you today but a very important one. As you can see, we're just down in our park field. That's that long field you can see that stretches beyond our shy horse paddocks and that's because today we've got an important job to do down at the very bottom. This is because the People's Trust for Endangered Species, that's a conservation charity, have very generously given us our very own water vole monitoring site. Now, as you know, we've just received our very own three water voles up in the mammal house. So those are our captive ones that we keep for education and for raising awareness about water voles. But we're going to be doing a little bit of conservation with wild water voles. So that's exactly what this site is going to be for. So what we've got to do is we've got to head down. We've got to monitor the site, survey it to see any signs of water voles and also for any signs of problems for them. So things like mink. So we're going to head down and hopefully we'll see what there is. So straight away we found you know signs of an animal that we are looking for. Unfortunately though it's not water voles, these are actually mink tracks. We can tell this by the five toes and roughly by the size as well. Now mink paw prints are a lot smaller than otters, so we know it's definitely not otters, and they do vary from uh, differ from dogs and cats as well. Also with the environment, it's a good guess, and we do know that mink have been present here before. So with all of that information and the shape of these, we can tell unfortunately it probably is mink. Now I'm saying unfortunately because mink are one of the main problems and one of the main reasons that the water voles have been on such a huge decline. Mink are what we call an alien invasive species. This means they were uh, unnaturally introduced, if you like, into the environment by us. And they have just decimated those populations of water voles because they're one of the easy prey that they can eat, unfortunately. So it's all important that we record it though. It's one of those signs that we do need to look for and send it back to the People's Trust for Endangered Species because they need to know if there's water voles or if there's mink, this all goes onto a big record of all these different sites all across the UK to give them a picture of where water voles are living and how many that there are as well. So it's all really important information and this will go towards that, um, that database. So we have moved a little bit further up the, uh, the waterway now and this is a little bit of a different type of habitat to what we were in earlier and we can see between these reeds and between this uh, foliage we've got tracks that actually lead from the water through these um, bits of plants if you like themselves. So it's going to be obviously larger animals using these than the water voles. The water voles would make their um, burrows in the banking um, next to the water and just above it. They wouldn't be making these tracks all the way through. Obviously with the size of these uh, gaps of these tracks as well it's going to be a larger animal again pointing to things like mink um, potentially otter but we've not seen signs of those other signs of those yet anyway but that's not to rule them out just because we haven't seen those signs doesn't mean they're not here but yeah all pointing to some sort of large animal obviously making their way to and from the water to this uh, habitat at the back here So I found a slightly better habitat now for water voles. Where we were before, the water kind of evened out straight onto the land. Water voles need a bit of banking, so they need a bit of height of ground, of soil above the water. And we've got that going on a little bit more here. So if they're going to be anywhere, they're going to be along this bit. So let's have a little further look along here. So then everyone, we're going to end our survey there. Obviously we've not found signs of water voles, but we did find those signs of mink. So equally important, as we've already mentioned, to record that and send it off to the People's Trust for Endangered Species. Any signs that they get of mink, they then get a picture as well of all these areas where they are, and then they know where they need to do a little bit more controlling of those. So equally as helpful knowing where they are, so they can in turn help the water voles by controlling the mink. So all really, really important information. Um, as we mentioned, you guys can get involved, so you can go online and as we've mentioned, it's People's Trust for Endangered Species. You type in water voles and it comes up with survey water voles. So this is where you guys can go, have a little scroll down and then you can sign up. It gives you a map and you can see all these different areas. So if there's a site near you and you've got the time to do it, then please, the People's Trust for Endangered Species would be very, very grateful. And we are very grateful to them for giving us this site to survey and have as our own. So big, big thank you uh, to them. Again, that's People's Trust for Endangered Species. Remember as well to come and see our water voles. We might not have seen any here, but we have our lovely three, uh, three girls, Georgie, Amy and Charlotte, up in our mammal house. And you guys can come and see them. They're active pretty much all day long. So come and see them. Okay, so we'll leave it there, guys. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.